Our next speaker is Head of Climate at the City of Helsinki, where she leads climate mitigation and adaptation activities. She has an extensive background in energy management, policies and strategy. She's had various governmental positions. She's been in the business sector and also with Greenpeace. She says about herself that she loves numbers and peer-reviewed research, which is why she really wants to concentrate on non uh, on non nonsense climate action. <clears throat> she's convinced that we need to fail fast and fail better. And she's going to talk about, as she said, the Helsinki Climate Program dot dot dot. Let's see what her story is all about. Please welcome on stage Kaiser Reta Koskinen. I was standing in the front of the Helsinki City Hall and I was thinking, I, was, I thought that my life is going to end. It's going to be the end of the world. So I had fucked up so badly, I thought I'm never going to recover from that. So traffic was passing by, but I did not hear it. I thought that I'm going to lose my job and I'm going to be unemployed for the rest of my life. Everything was just two months, everything was falling apart and there was nothing, absolutely nothing I could do to help that. Um, as said, my name is Kaisa Reta Koskinen. It's a very difficult name, even Finnish people, they can't make it right. And I'm the head of climate in the city of Helsinki. I have been working for Helsinki around five years. And now I'm going to share you a story, my story, about the Helsinki's first climate action plan. It can be a little bit painful to listen to, but uh, as you can see, I survived, I'm still here, I'm still standing, and I promise you that there is a happy ending, or at least happy. And during the process I failed a lot, but I also learned a lot, and I'm also going to share those learnings with you. But first I want to say, one a disclaimer, and this is the important one. Because I'm going to challenge things which are not typically challenged in the climate couple. And I count myself into that couple too. But everything I am going to say I learned the hard way through my own experiences. And I justify this challenging action because as a humankind we are in a very dangerous stage at the moment. Climate change is uh, uh, the biggest uh, challenge the humankind has ever faced. And to be true, we are not doing too well with that. We have to take the challenge seriously and we also have to evaluate and to be critical about our own feelings. We do not have time to fail slowly, we have to fail fast. But let's start. Let's jump straight to the beginning. Five years ago, we had a dream conditions in Helsinki. So, climate mission target was written into the city strategy. It's a very strong paper in Helsinki. And uh, emission reduction program was one of the spreadhead uh, programs of city. We had support from the mayor and from the biggest parties. So conditions were perfect, nothing can go wrong. But it did, and it did big time. So this is my car accident now. So Helsinki's first climate action plan was approved in 2018. I, as just appointed project director, was full of will and enthusiasm, and I was ready to hit it. 
I took the brand new uh, program with me and I started to organize meetings with the people. Head of units and service directors who were responsible for implementing the agreed access. When the meeting time came, those people, they were really angry. They did not welcome me with open arms. And they had, I must admit now, they had a very good reason for their behavior. Because when we were preparing the program, we had held lots of workshops where anyone could participate. But we did not make sure that the most important people, those who are responsible for implementing the access, were there. And they weren't. We learned that it's not enough that just some person from the service or from unit participates if they don't have the mandate to agree on the access. You have to talk to the directors, directors personally and you have to talk to them beforehand. And the most important part, you have to listen to what they say because they are experts on their field. We hadn't, we hadn't done any of that. And it created a lot of wasted time and distrust. It was a mistake that took a long time to fix. That was my first lesson uh, to make sure the right people are on board all the way. Uh, as I already mentioned, we collected actions through a participatory process. We organized lots of uh, workshops where anyone could participate. And more than 300 people participated, even more through online channels. Through this process, we ended up uh, with a program with 147 accents spreading throughout the city. And it sounds really good. It's a great marketing line. And it's exactly how these kinds of programs should be made. Take as many people on board as possible, listen everyone, and implement all the access, because we need everyone's opinions and ideas, and every action is important, right? And now I'm going to do the challenge, challenging part, because I am going to challenge the current understanding of what of the climate work, and I'm going to do it big time. Because I am going to claim that we don't need new ideas on what to do. What we need is we have to implement the existing most impactful, impactful ones. We already know what we have to do. And I am also claiming that not every action is needed. At this point, we need to focus our resources on the big ones. We have to do the ones now. Unfortunately, I realized this early after the program was already approved. And it was that kind of oh, oh shit moment. But what you could do, it was done already. Uh, so, you know, we had a program with 147 access. As we took a deep dive into the program, we very quickly realized that most of them were ideas about what we could do. They were created from the bottom up and they were ideas which are very easy to implement. Because nobody is opposing them, as they did not introduce any change what was already being done. There were access around nudging people towards more climate-friendly behavior and information sharing campaigns on various topics. There was an accent on co-designing new locations for community gardens and things like that. They were nice access, but did not produce emissions at all. So 
So there were no taxes which should be included in a program aimed at carbon neutrality. And I was the one person in charge of that stupid program. So I just tried to keep swimming and I hoped that these kind of problems, they will, they will solve themselves. I have to admit that the road was already a little bit pumpy at that point, but it was a new program, so what could you expect, three? Really? And this is my learning number two. If you want to achieve your target, concentrate on the actions that will do that. Don't ask for new ideas if you really don't need them. And if you really need them, consider carefully who the people are that, can, that really can help you. And trust professionals. Many times when we are discussing about the participation and involving everyone, the discussion is missing the fact that we, people in this room, we are experts on climate issues and we have valid and solid points and opinions. We have expertise that non-experts don't have, and this expertise should be acknowledged. And that was my num lesson number two. Lesson number three, 147 access. I just have one message to you. No, don't do it. It's far too many, you know, it's, yeah, no. <laughs> now you people think that this can't go any worse, but it will. I was giving a project update to the city executive team when one of them asked me, hey, by doing all these actions, so are we going to be a carbon neutral? <laughs> I was standing there with empty eyes and the only thing I was able to say was that, you know, that's a very good question. <laughs> I would say that it's an excellent question indeed. Because that was the only thing I could say. The truth is, we didn't know. And now you are probably wondering how stupid this person is for not considering this kind of basic thing since the beginning. And I agree. With the understanding I have now, I cannot understand that either. We had access, but they were not qualified, quantified from the emission reduction point of view. After realizing this, I started a rescue mission, and we tried to sort the access by the size of the emission reduction potential. But to be true, it was a mission set to fail. It is very difficult to charge if de developing city planning regulation would cause a big or small impact to the total emission, or if benchmarking other cities' actions on ESCO funding would be a thing at all. <laughs> and we simply did not know how far we were reaching by implementing all the access. And at that point, things started to go wrong very fast. Uh, during this called uh, rescue mission, I realized that there are there are not too many accents in the category big impact, and it was a very worrisome thing to realize. At that point, I started to be really worried, and that's my uh, lesson number four. Always try to quantify the emission reduction potential of your access. Otherwise, it's too easy to slip to the lake full of tiny microscopic actions. Quantification, even if very rough one, is crucial. Trust me, 
you need to know how far your accent will take you. I cannot highlight this enough. Quantification also helps you to prioritize your access. Everybody is working with limited resources, and because of that, we have to focus on the things which helps us most. We have to focus on must-do access instead of a could-be-nice kind of access. And numbers, they are your best ally to do this evaluation. So lesson number five. Always know your accents and how far they are going to take you. And if they are not helping you a lot, just skip them. But on the bright side, oh, on the bright side, we, oh, we have a lot of data. Not uh, data we urgently needed at that point, but we had 280 indicators. <laughs> Unfortunately, zero of them was measuring the total emission reduction. <laughs> so I think that maybe you on the back row, you probably not hear this, so I'm going to repeat it. So, zero, nil, nada, none of them, you know, was about the climate emission reduction. Most of the indicators, they were about uh, the activities on access. But they did not help us determine whether we are going, whether we are doing good from the emission perspective. To be honest, we were not even able to update most of the indicators as we did not have data. Lesson number six, measure what you want to achieve. If your goal is reduce emissions, measure emission reduction. Indicators are not important as such. Focus on the main indicators and leave everything else. Keep your eyes on the road. The next thing I am going to tell you is probably the most difficult failure for me to share. I'm usually a happy little camper and I very rarely lose my good spirit but this next thing almost knocked me down. My precious colleague Susa, who is on the audience by the way, started to evaluate our accents more closely and found out that only six accents out of 147, and I repeat this, six accents out of 147, we're reducing climate, in, uh, climate emissions. It was not only that we were having too many accents and that they were a little bit weak and a little bit unclear, and we had too many indicators we were not able to utilize for updates. It was that the most of the things we were doing were not relevant at all. That was the devastating thing. When I saw the numbers, I was really ashamed, and I still am, but just a little bit. <laughs> My first reaction was that we should not show these numbers to anybody, <laughs> because they were so bad. <laughs> they are really bad, they are, you know, you, you, you can say it, you know, they are really bad. Uh, I wanted to destroy the results and bribe Susa. Never, ever tell anybody the numbers. These numbers, they showed that I failed. And I failed big time. I was concentrating on the wrong things, and I was not capable of leading this kind of project. With this thought in mind, I was standing in the front of the city hall on the earth of December and 2019. But guess what? We are sharing the numbers to everyone. Those numbers are in this slide book we have um, published and you, you can download from our web page. 
for free. We want to share these embarrassing numbers and all our, our lesson learned because we think that failing is not end of the world. I know now. I truly believe that failing fast is just an opportunity to learn quickly. It is very nice to come to the conferences like this and tell everybody how good we are doing and how brilliant our program is. But I think it's as important to be totally open and share the failures too. We are running out of time with climate change and we don't have time to repeat the same mistakes in every city and learn our way. Successing is nice, but I think that we should celebrate failing equally. Remember how I told you in the beginning that this is the story of the first iteration of the Helsinki Climate Action Plan. I still have my job and we are now in the second iteration and it is using all the learnings I just shared with you. We talk, we talk to the best experts we can find. We do implement only the big and impactful actions and even if they are hard to do once. And we use just one indicator. The indicator that shows how fast the emissions are going down. During the last four years I have been failing a lot. Probably more than ever before in my whole life. But at the same time I have had an extremely steep learning curve. So I promise you, next time I'm going to fail, and I will, I promise to fail faster, and I promise to fail better.